This is Walnut. Wait, no, this is Walnut. He's a loggerhead musk turtle, a smaller species native to the southern United States. They max out right around 4 to 5 inches, so he's nearly full grown. It's crazy to think that I've already had him for 9 months. My friend Charlie raised him up from a hatchling. He was just a little guy. However, he was produced and born at Greg's Turtle Haven. When I got him, I created an environment that loosely mimics where he'd naturally reside. It worked so well that I didn't see him for nearly two months. The food was disappearing though, so I had to trust he was fine and just needed time to acclimate. That's the thing about naturalistic enclosure design. It allows the animals to exhibit a fuller range of behaviors, but sometimes that means they can't be found. Slowly but surely, Walnut warmed up to us and is full of personality. That may primarily be when it's feeding time at night, and he's always keen to run away with his spoils, but I digress. That all transpired within a 40 gallon tank, but that was never the long term plan. I wanted to one day move him into Cookie's 75 gallon, which has recently been freed up because somebody's getting too big. Girl, you know I love you, but this one's not about you. As I was cleaning this out and getting it ready for the build, I noticed a serious problem. The back panel has a huge crack. I assume our little aquascaper had something to do with that, but either way, it's no good. I had to get a new one, and we'll repair this one later. However, before I can use it, I have to drill for filtration. Luckily, the glass isn't tempered, so I'm able to do that with ease. I just have to put them in the right location. I want the intake near the bottom and the return close to the water's surface. Making the holes is simple with guides that tape onto the tank. These hold water, which keeps the diamond-tipped hole soft from overheating. Then I simply let the weight of the drill do the work. Well, that's usually how it goes down. Ah, <sighs> so this is annoying. Checked it with the polarized sunglasses. It seemed to check out to me. I've done it plenty of times before, never had an issue. As you can see, clearly it was actually tempered because that exploded. I guess I gotta get this cleaned up and have a plan B. That's not at all what I expected to happen. Things don't always go according to plan though. However, I think I have a viable solution here if I'm able to pull it off. Wish me luck. Aside from buying a new tank, I really only had one option. Replace the broken piece of glass with one I could drill. The obvious choice was the front from the other tank, since I'd have to dismantle it anyway. When you drill a tank, it should happen like this. No cracks or shattering. I just had to remove the old frame, separate it from the tank, and clean it off. It couldn't be installed unless the frame on this tank and the old silicone was removed. With a blank slate, all I had to do was clean the glass, tape the seams, apply silicone, set the glass, address the internal beads, remove the tape, and put the frame back on top. I thought I was going to finally get away with not having to make a custom tank in this one. No matter how many times you do something though, there's always room to learn. Some of you may have caught this already, but the piece of glass I drilled wasn't the one I checked. The piece that passed the test was actually the front of this tank, so although I checked it, it was an oversight on my end because I drilled the wrong one. Anyway, I had a very specific idea in mind here, something built around cypress knees. These turtles are found in many places with them, so they make it easy to mimic their natural environment. Loggerheads spend the vast majority of their time in water and don't bask often. However, when they do, they prefer to cling on vertical surfaces, and that's often on cypress knees. I learned that from Greg after the fact, which is likely why I've never seen walnut bask. With that information, I knew I had to include them, but what the heck even are they? Bald cypress trees like the ones these came from display a vast network of knees when growing in wet areas. Many theories regarding their function have been suggested, but their true purpose remains unknown. However, what I can say is they create really interesting habitats for other plants and animals alike, including loggerheads. As you can see, I have an array of sizes to work with. However, they're extremely lightweight and will float. I need a way to keep them underwater. I could boil them to get them waterlogged, but that's not possible with the large pieces. I also have slate in the studio that's ready to go, but again, I don't think it would be a viable solution for the larger knees. Of course I could buy bigger pieces, but I think I have a better idea. I have a bunch of much heavier flagstone pieces outside, which should make the task a breeze. However, putting heavy rocks in a tank can get sketchy without distributing their weight. Egg crate light diffuser is perfect for the task. The only remaining challenge is to mount the knees on the stones. To do that properly, I had to know where everything would go. I started with the largest one and worked my way down. That sounds simple, but I was limited to what I could fit on the stones. 
eventually the escape came together, and I could definitely see it working well for Walnut. Now I knew reassembly would be a nightmare without a system. My solution was to outline each piece and number the correlating surfaces. After that, the task was simple. I just drilled through the stones and locked them in with stainless steel screws. These looked perfect. However, there was a lot of loose debris, so I figured I'd pressure wash them for good measure. I tinted the back of the tank before installing the plumbing pieces and placing the scape. With the tank and the rack and the scape all assembled, it looks pretty good. However, it looked even better with some plants. I removed as much substrate from the roots as I could by hand before rinsing off the remainder. Ferns often grow on cypress knees in nature, so they were an obvious choice. Plus, rabbit's foot ferns do great with their roots in water. I roughed out this look with zip ties, but they weren't final. I tied them on for good with fishing line. This is an annoying process. It works well though, and will be completely hidden after moss grows on it. Till then, Java moss will at least make it appear less conspicuous. Spraying it down kept it in place while I tied it on. Environments like what I'm trying to replicate generally include air plants as well. I put a dab of super glue on each and stuck them to areas above the water line. The progress was great to see, but I knew sand would tie it all together. I thought a few stones could help with that as well, but I had to be careful not to go overboard and take away from everything else. It was ready for water and looked good until it didn't. I noticed that the left part of the scape was floating. Not cool. Luckily I had another flagstone I could zip tie under it. I just had to tidy things up and sprinkle in pebbles for more texture. It probably didn't need more plants, but this hemigraphus in his current tank was looking really good. I couldn't help but add it. I thought I was finally in the clear, but I just noticed another issue. The waterline wasn't quite where I anticipated in relation to the ferns. My solution was this. I inserted a wire into wicking rope to create flexible water wicks. I concealed these with moss and hid them among the fern rhizomes. These will ensure the plants remain hydrated until their roots work their way fully down into the water. It's just about complete, but there are a few other details I need to add. It'd be easier to do that without water, so I'll get it drained down and we'll finish it up. Change of plans, actually. I went outside to get some oak branches to help naturalize everything. I figured it best to add them while the tank was full to ensure they don't float. Now then, I drained it down and prepared the botanicals. Boiling them first will ensure they sink immediately. I thoroughly enjoy including these any chance I can get. In my opinion, they're easily one of the most crucial elements when making a setup like this. Before filling it back up, I covered the filter's intake with a sponge. It looked much better, but it needed more leaves. The first inhabitants are currently living within this aquarium. A closer look at the Seuss Fosser Tong and you'll see that it's teeming with life. Scuds to be specific. Pulling out a clump of plants was the easiest way to collect some. Now I didn't see any here until I submerged the dish. See all those white dots? Those are scuds. I spread out the plants and got the next inhabitants, snails. I'll add more later, but this is a good start. Lastly, I topped it off with Salvinia minima. There's not much else I can think to do with it in the short term, and it's absolutely crazy to see the scale of walnut next to it, but I think it will be even cooler to see a minute. I can't say I'm surprised that he immediately hid behind the knees, but what I didn't expect to see was him climbing up them so quickly. It's like he was a magnet, he went right for them. He hid back in this area for some time until curiosity got the best of him. His interaction with the environment just looks so natural. I don't know about you, but I can truly imagine seeing this outside. Like if I showed you these clips here, you'd have no idea that it was within a glass box. I also love how much more room he has to explore and hunt. And truthfully, he's not going to get much bigger, maybe about an inch tops. So this will actually be a viable long-term housing solution for him. This setup is new, but give it time. The snails and scuds will colonize and become prolific, providing a steady source of food he can hunt down between feedings. That would be great enrichment. I'm also excited to see the plants grow in above the waterline. I can only imagine what it's going to look like a year from now. 
I'm sure I'll adjust things in time, but it'll be fun to watch him grow and mature inside of his own slice of nature.